So Liverpool wanted to sign a DM and Liverpool wanted to sign Subamende, but it looks like that's not going to happen. So the question is, are Liverpool signing a new DM? Is Gravenberts going to be used as the DM? What is the plan for the six role about Liverpool? Well, we're going to discuss that because Ryan Gravenberts played as a DM versus Ipswich and particularly in that second half, he was absolutely phenomenal. He looked very good and what um, Slot wanted from Subamende on the ball, you actually did see from Ryan Gravenberg in that game. The, uh, the question mark around it is, Ryan Gravenberg, while I think he's a brilliant player, has been inconsistent for Liverpool. It's early doors. You've got to compete with Manchester City and Arsenal that had Rodri and Declan Rice. Do Liverpool want to take a risk on that six position? Or do they go, you know what, we get a six, even if Slot thinks Ryan Gravenberg can do the job? Because Ryan Gravenberg did the job versus Ipswich. He was receiving the ball from the centre-back on the half turn with his back to goal, turning and then progressing the ball forward. And Ipswich had three players on him here. Oh, let's move away from this player. Turns to evade the press, plays out the pass. Very good in tight spaces, very good at receiving the ball at all angles, very good with his back to goal and can be elite in the first phase, which is why Slot doesn't really like Endo because Endo does what you want off the ball for DM, but not so much on, which is why he wants to mend in. Well, Gravenberg definitely has those traits. And in this video, we're going to be talking about can Gravenberg play as a six for Liverpool? What are Liverpool's plans for the transfer window? What could likely happen in the sixth position and more? So please do hit that like button if you have not already. And of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Now, these are my three options that I think Liverpool may look at if you're looking at the profile of DM that Slot wants. Obviously, with Johnny of Real Betis, he's probably not as experienced and maybe needs another season before Liverpool go for him. He's a little bit younger in the sense of hasn't maybe quite isn't at the level yet, but I think he's a really good player. I think Angelo still is probably the closest you're going to get to Supermende, but apparently he doesn't want to leave Germany, Supermende doesn't want to leave Spain. That's the question mark there. And then there's Alan Varela, which on the ball is very good. Reminds me of Rodri on the ball. And I think he's somewhat decent off the ball. It would just be interesting to see how he'd do in the Premier League physically. I think these are probably the three DMs that if Liverpool do sign a DM, they would be looking at, or maybe a surprise. Now, what are Liverpool's transfer plans? So Liverpool keep working on several opportunities in the market and I would keep the door open for signings in the final two weeks of the window, said Romano, not just in midfield, but other positions. Joe Gomez could be going. They might be signing that goalkeeper. They, they sold young players. cavallio has gone. You know, I think Slot wants a winger. I think Slot wants a DM. And I think Slot wants a long-term Matic replacement because Konate is injury prone. I think that's what Liverpool are looking at. So we will talk about that later on. But there's a big will they, won't they on will Liverpool sign a DM or not? Now they're not getting some Mende. Are they going to sign anyone in midfield? Are they not? You've got Richard Hughes, you've got Michael Edwards, you've got some of the smartest people in the space. Liverpool are very much, they'll do the signing if they think it's the right signing or they could be secretly working on it and nobody knows. I mean, I think nobody really knows because one report says that Liverpool are the only Premier League club not to make a signing, but that is soon expected to change with moves underway to strengthen the defensive midfield. But then another source says it's unlikely that Liverpool will move on for an alternative target now in the holding midfield department. They're being opportunistic in the market and are only signed players that would definitely improve the team. They may not go for Super Mende. Now, why won't Liverpool sign a six this summer? Could that be because they're waiting for someone next summer? My thought process is they only sign a six if they're 100% sure about him and he improves the 11. Super Mende, the six market, is a little bit overpriced and not the best. Or they wait for next summer and say, you know what, could Gravenberg do the job? Could McAllister do the job? Endo is still there by Chechich is basically a new player. You've, we've got options, Liverpool may say. We've got options. That was, that's what they may say. Do we wait and do we save our money for Adam Morton is what Liverpool may be saying. Now, I think I want Adam Morton and Man United, so hopefully not. But I think there could be a big reason behind that. He's not going anywhere this summer, Palace say, but next summer. I mean, Adam Water could have a bad season at PSG, not PSG, Crystal Palace, you never know. But I think Liverpool will be saying, could could be waiting for him. I think Liverpool be, could be waiting for him next summer. So let's talk about Liverpool's midfield, their midfield options and what they can do in the DM position. So it's obviously said there's by Chetic, young player, looks good, but very raw. There's McAllister, there's Gravenberch, there's Sobersly, there's Endo. So they've got options. They've got four players that can potentially fill in the DM role. Endo is a natural DM, but not slot kind of player. Sobersly, I wouldn't play him as a DM. He's got physical abilities, but I think he's so much better further forward. It's probably between McAllister and Gravenberg. And when you look at Matt's Weaver and what slot wants from his DM in terms of a ball carrier, you've probably got that best in Gravenberg. I think McAllister's defensive awareness and positioning is better, but I think Gravenberg, in terms of what you went had at Matt's Weaver, in terms of ball carrying, his winning back the ball, you can see it. 
So let's talk about Gavin Burke, because as a six, he's very good at receiving the ball from the defence and progressing play. He receives the ball from the defence here, he gets the ball and he progresses play. So you can see examples of him here receiving the ball and playing it in. You can see examples of it here, him receiving the ball and then he's playing it really long over into Salah there. He can play it short, he can play it long. There's a lot of examples of what he can do. So I want to tell you a little bit about Gavin Burke, because... I watched a lot of Ajax when Gravenberg was there in his last season and I was blown away by how good Gravenberg was. He went to Bayern, they didn't play him. Liverpool, he showed potential last year, but was hit and miss, but he also basically didn't play for a year at Bayern. So I can see that. Now, I thought that Gravenberg was unbelievable at um, Ajax. He was physical, he's tall, he's technical, and that is a very immense skill set to have. He's got the physical ability, he's got technical abilities. He's this long-legged guy that can control the ball and is technically good, which is quite rare in football. So I'm going to tell you about Gravenberg from what I knew about him in his Ajax days and if he could play for a six, if he could be on his sort of six at Liverpool. So with Gravenberg, he's a player that's very good on the ball and he has potential to be coached into an elite player in the first phase. He's shown that he's very comfortable in the first phase, on the ball, receiving the ball at all angles. And the reason Schlott doesn't 100% rate Endo is because while he's good off the ball, on the ball, he moves it a bit slow. He's not always the best in the first phase because he's not always the most comfortable. With Gravenberg, you've got a guy that is extremely comfortable on the ball. He's able to receive it at all angles and he's able to progress it forward effectively. Gravenberg excels at disguising passes and can deliver them at various angles and distances, short, long, medium. He has a strong ability to break lines and drop deep to pick up players in the pocket. So the half space, you saw Soberslai getting into the right half space, Salah, Connor Bradley, Trent getting up there. Gravenberg is very good at doing that. Gravenberg is very good at when he has the ball, people think he's going to play it left, he plays, plays it right. That's what I mean by disguising passes. He's very good at, you know, moving his body one way. So it shifts the defender to go one way, thinking he's going to play it that way. And actually Gravenberg moves the other way. And I'm going to show examples of that and finding space for himself. So he creates himself a passing angle and space to play off a pass. Very good at, you know, creating separation away from the defender and the person pressing him to then play that pass forward, break the lines. And he's very good on the ball, dropping deep. He likes to come towards the ball, drop deep, pick it up from the defenders and then play it forward. He's very good at that, which is what Slot will want in his midfielder, which is why Gavin Burke, you know, may be someone that Slot plays a lot. And he, you could see the potential of Gavin Burke we saw at Ajax at Liverpool and what he could be. His style at Ajax, where he dropped deep, um, could mean he works well in a dual pivot. I think he could work really well in a dual pivot. He played in a dual pivot at times at Ajax, but his his style at Ajax, where he liked to drop deep, receive the ball off the centre-backs and then play it into the half space, could also work well with McAllister and Sorbosly, who are very good at getting in those half spaces and influencing these attacking zones. And at Ajax, he also showed that he's very good at playing the ball long over the defensive line, as well as breaking the lines, if Liverpool want a more direct approach with someone like Salah or Nunes running in behind. And he did that versus Ipswich, and it worked quite well. I think, in my opinion, he's not a lone six. He would work best in a double pivot. And I think Slot does seem to prefer double pivots, but one being more defensive. But I think if he was a lone six, he would need a DM to come in and support him and, and invert alongside him, if anything. So he does have similarities to Weaver technically and physically. And I think he's very good at sort of ground coverage. And he seems that he's quite athletically good as well, which Slot will want in his players. He's elite, he's tall, he's fast, he's got good stamina, long legs. So that means he can cover large spaces with Eden ease and eat up ground with ease he's going to be covered to you know cover a large amount of ground and slot system and he's kind of got the legs to do that a little bit like Matt Weaver. there's a lot of similarities there one thing he does very well is he uses his body well to shield the ball he has a good touch he has good close control but he uses his body to shield the ball when players do press him he's very good at just playing out from the press pushing players off he doesn't get pushed off the ball easily he's not someone that is mistake prone he's comfortable in jewels he's comfortable in tight spaces as i said he uses his body to win back the ball using his long legs to get his feet on jewels win back the ball but also when he has the ball keep it for me his best trait and i haven't mentioned this is driving from deep he is an elite ball carrier when I think of Gravenberg and Gravenberg at his best, it is Gravenberg in a dual pivot, receiving the ball, carrying the ball forward. He is strong. He's got those long strides. Gravenberg's best attribute and one of the things he's best at in world football is ball carrying from midfield. Progression, ball carrying from midfield, which I'm sure slot will want. The concerns around Gravenberg as a six is defensive awareness. I think his positional sense and defensive awareness isn't necessarily the best. Ability to defend transitions because of defensive awareness and tracking runners. The wide spaces, potentially transition defending, defensive awareness, positional sense. I think defensively he's a good tackler. It's just his awareness in that position. But that could potentially be coached into him. He's a very intelligent footballer. He could learn and improve on that with the right coaching. 
you look at Gravenberg here, and this is where he stood out versus Liverpool. He was getting the ball, and he was literally pinging this ball over the top here. Um, he was then getting the ball and winning it back a few times. Every, he would win the ball back a few times right on the edge of Liverpool's box. He'd play it forward. One thing that he was really good at is disguising his passless movement. He receives the ball here in quite a difficult angle. You think he's going that way, but no. He turns, he sends the defender the other way, and he opens up space for himself and he plays a pass forward. He's very good at turning out from the press with ease. He's very good at just getting the ball from the centre back and progressing the ball. He's received the ball like two seconds before this and he's starting to drive forward. He's still driving forward. He's still driving forward. Then he plays a pass just here into Diaz and almost plays Diaz through. He's very good at getting the ball, driving up and playing a pass. His ability to pass, his ability to carry, his ability to press play is what Slot wants in possession for a midfielder. And that's where Graven Birch stands out. So my conclusion on Graven Birch is he's naturally talented with potential to be developed into an elite midfielder. He looked very good uh, under slot so far, particularly in that second half versus Ipswich. I thought he had a good pre-season. He's an excellent ball carrier and a progressor. He's very intelligent and effective at pressing and progressing plays. He's capable of breaking lines on the ball and pressing. He's very good. Now, the other conclusion is, I think he can do elements of what slot wants in that first phase of play and really be developed into a key player. But he's not a strong swimmer mainly off the ball if you're looking at his positional discipline, his game reading. And I think he's more of someone that you play in double pivot, not a single pivot. And considering that Slot does like to play this 4-2-3-1 formation, I think it could work with the right partner. But the question is, who's going to be the right partner for him? Is it going to be McAllister? Is it going to be is it going to be Curtis Jones, maybe, by Chetic? It's about finding him the right partner. But he could play as a six in a, in, a, in a double pivot role. But I think as a lone six to go into the season with Graven Birch as your only option as a lone six would be a massive risk considering just how good and competitive the Premier League is. If I'm Liverpool, I do look at signing DM. Now, what I thought um, about his game versus Ipswich was very positive. And I think looking at him versus Ipswich, you know, it's OK, it's way too early to judge him fully. This is Ipswich. We don't know how good Ipswich are going to be in the Premier League. And all of that. and But I thought he was very good versus Ipswich. And I think because he had limited um, minutes at Bayern, I think it was going to take him a season to warm up, which is why last season was a bit inconsistent for Liverpool. But he showed elements of his potential, of course, last season versus Liverpool. I thought in the second half versus Ipswich, he was so comfortable on the ball. He's able to take the ball at all angles, receive it at the half turn and deliver brilliant passes, often finding Sobosly in really good attacking positions. I just think he needs to enhance his positional discipline and defensive abilities. If he can enhance his positional discipline and defensive abilities, he could turn into a six under slot. I think slot is a very good coach and he could potentially turn Gravenberg into a six. And as you can see, this was his game numbers versus Ipswich. Very good game numbers. Five out of 11 ground rules won. Maybe you want a bit of improvement there and a bit of improvement in positional sense, but he wasn't dribbled past once. And he really showed that maybe he's got the attributes to be developed as a six. It's not a natural six. He's probably someone that can play in a dual pivot as a six. But he's definitely got the ability to potentially be developed into a more defensive role and do a job for Liverpool for a year. Now, my conclusion is that Liverpool should sign a DM and not take the risk. I think you've got the money, you should do it. But I do think that Liverpool will only sign a DM if they're 100% certain it's the right fit and profile and that's going to improve the likes of the Mende. If not, I think they're more than comfortable relying on Graven Perch by Chetitz, Endo, Dominic Sobosly and McAllister to do that role. They've got a lot of options, potentially even Curtis Jones. I think Liverpool is likely to spend the summer. I don't think they might, if they don't spend on DM, I still think they can invest in a winger and a centre back. And Romano himself has said he expects business from Liverpool, um, but Liverpool are very secretive about their plans. You know, many, many of the players that Liverpool buy, they're not linked to and then they get linked to them. And Richard Hughes and Michael Edwards are smart. They're going to want to make the right signs. They're going to want to keep it secret. I think Liverpool could be working on something. Liverpool fans, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. Bye.